What's going on gardeners? On today's two minute garden tip, we're going to discuss a very serious disease that can end your entire growing season before it even starts. I'm talking about damping off disease. Damping off disease is a blanket term that describes a number of soil-borne pathogens that can cause seedlings that germinate to immediately start wilting and dying. This disease is most prevalent in wet and cool conditions and soil that has been kept too moist. There are many ways to prevent damping off disease. The most common ways is to make sure that you don't overhydrate your mix and to allow the top of the soil to dry out here and there and especially give it exposure to UV rays, particularly from the sun because that sanitizes the soil. However, by far, the most effective thing you can do to prevent damping off disease is to start your seeds in sterile starting mix. The best way to make sure that you're starting off in a sterile medium is to either start your seeds in these compressed peat pellets or you can go out and buy one of those dried bricks of cocoa core and hydrate it yourself. Because you're starting off with a completely dry medium, there's no way for soil-borne bacteria and fungi to grow, so you're starting off with a very safe environment to start your seeds. Every year, I start my tomato, pepper, eggplant, and cucurbit seed transplants in the peat pellets because they are a fantastic way to begin your transplants in a sterile medium and they germinate incredibly quickly when you use them. However, they do involve an additional step. Because the seeds grow so quickly, they will quickly outgrow the small peat pellets, so you have to up-pot them into a larger container shortly after germination, and that's always been a little bit of extra work for me. So this year, in order to save myself a step, I decided I was going to make my own seed starting mix out of one of those large tubes of peat moss and cut it with perlite. And then I would directly fill these seed starting trays with that mix and that would save me an additional step and I won't have to up pot them. That turned out to be a total disaster. Because those big cubes of peat moss are already prehydrated, they are not sterile. And as a result, most of the seeds that I've started using that as the base for my seed starting mix have damped off. Every single tomato and pepper plant that I had sown in this seed starting mix has failed. They have all damped off within a couple of days of them breaking the surface. Everything looks good at first, but then the stem of the transplant starts shriveling up, turning brown, and then wilting, and the plants die. Just how bad is this problem exactly? Just look at my onion transplants that I started more than a month earlier. Onion plants are far hardier than nightshades, and they can stave off and fight off diseases that nightshades could only dream of. But just look how much damping off happened in this onion transplant tray. This wasn't a germination issue. They germinated just fine. It's just a lot of them would wither and shrivel up shortly after they germinated because I used mix made from that same bale of peat moss. So now all because I chose to use a non-sterile medium in order to try and save myself time, I am going to have a dramatically reduced tomato and onion harvest for the entire year. So now in an emergency move, I had to drop everything I was doing and start my tomato and pepper seeds all over again. And I'm using peat pellets this time the proper way in a sterile medium and while things are already starting to germinate and they are not withering away like in the other soil mix this time there is a major problem with this if you live in a northern or western climate where it doesn't get all that hot during the summer or it takes a very long time before it finally gets hot it's not a big deal to put in your tomato and pepper transplants two or three weeks late but here in the southeast it is a devastating problem that's because around memorial day it starts getting too hot and humid for tomato plants to adequately pollinate if your tomato plants are not actively flowering by early April, you're in a lot of trouble because come the end of May, any flowers that form after that point are going to shrivel up and drop. So you only have about a six to eight week window for all of your flowers to pollinate. So for someone like me that has to get their tomato transplants in ground at the very latest by April 1st, being three to four weeks behind is absolutely devastating. And in many ways, my tomato season has ended before it's even started and I'm already looking to 2024 to have a good year. So I'm making this video because I want to share my failures with you and teach you a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. Even with all my years of experience, I tried to cut a corner this year to save me time and look what happened. It cost me much of my entire season. So please don't make this mistake. Always make sure you start your seedlings in a sterile transplanting mix. And it's better to be a couple of weeks early than to start it exactly on time or late. Because that way, if your transplants fail early in the game, you have enough time to recover. So 
from now on, I'm never going to cut it this close again. I'm going to spend the extra money on the sterile mixes and I'm going to start my transplants a week or two early because I'd rather them be too large at transplant time than too small because I could miss my pollination window. If you're looking for a source of peat pellets or cocoa core bricks to ensure that you're starting your seeds in a sterile medium, I'll make sure to link to them in my Amazon storefront down in the list seed starting supplies for your convenience. And that's today's two minute garden tip. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated.